All right, so I'm at my wife's shop, obviously. And I got thinking, what is a bait wall? And my wife's shop, you can see behind me here, all the musky lures, it's the off season. So unfortunately there's not a lot by her standards. The walls are pretty bare right now. And come spring, these will be completely full. So that got me thinking, how do you organize your stuff in your man cave so that it looks like a retail location? Being part of the Dadson community, you get to see a lot of the Dadson walls and that's kind of what started it for me, wanting to organize my stuff. But why did I really need a bait wall? This is one of the reasons why we wanted to build this bait wall is for a cool backdrop for the YouTube channel. You get the lights going. We have the board up here. It just, it lends itself to being, you know, specific to what we're doing on this channel for you guys. So guys like Johnny Dadson, they have, you know, this really cool wall of baits behind them here's a quick pick of johnny's and i asked them send me a quick video of some of your heavy hitters and you look at these baits and what they've done for him i can only hope to have you know some of our baits do the same thing some of the bass pro guys have these amazing bait rooms so it was the idea of trying to to get it organized but without seeming excessive The man cave wasn't always set up like this. Early on in our YouTube journey, I was set up over there. And here's a clip of when we first started. And I, I look back and I cringe at the production value, about the backdrop, about the way we set it up. But it's a journey. We're at a different place now, but we all started somewhere. And in that clip, you can see all the lures hanging behind me up top. Here's a clip of it again, and it it was just messy. It wasn't pretty to look at it. It wasn't efficient. It didn't have the qualities of a bait wall that I wanted. So when we started making some changes, I look back, at, back on some of the things that I did in this cave. And for a long time when I had the band going, this was our rehearsal space. And this is where we learned a lot of our music, a lot of the songs, and this is where we became Blackjack, which is what the band was called that I played in with my buddies. And moving forward as we started the YouTube channel, we wanted to do something cool, unique, fun. The challenge was always gonna be, could we do this in such a way that we can share it with you guys, we can use it as an inventory. We can use it as promotion for the companies that we work with. And yet, can we come across as you know very genuine and authentic? This is really me. This is I built all this stuff. I take a lot of time and energy to set it up. And I enjoy it. It's a hobby. It's a hobby like when I was in the band. We, you know, we were into that you know, really deep and I don't have other hobbies. Fishing is my hobby, it's my passion. Outside of spending time with my family and my friends, this is what we do, and that's why we built this. Okay guys, I have Kenzie and Katie, my daughters here to help, and this is gonna be, it's gonna be a big undertaking. We got a lot of baits here, right girls? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm not even sure where to start, and I think what I'm gonna do, because you guys asked, about the dad sends a lot about the silver jailbirds here in the middle we'll kind of start there okay so i'm going to start with the dad sends and this right here kenzie mm -hmm. is the very first dad send that i ever got and i bought <laughs> it at mom's that? shop yeah it's pretty ratty caught some nice fish on it and i paid retail money for it that's the very first one hold that 
Well, the first one I ever got from Johnny is right here, and it's one of the ones with the skull print, the, the skullette, they call it. And Johnny reached out to me through Instagram or Messenger, I'm not sure, and asked if we want to try one of his baits, and he sent this 10 millimeter to me, and we had just a ton of luck. I believe it had, you can barely see my name on the back of it. <laughs> yeah. It said Glenn McDonald, and then it said Undead Perch. So that's that was the start of the Dadson collection. The ones that everybody wants are, and there's a ton here, but it's a blade with no name. And we're kind of known for that, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So this is one of the ones, and it says Pro Staff Glenn McDonald, purple, hot purple haze. That's what it looks like. And I got a bunch here. There's a bunch in there. I'm not going to go through every single one. This is the one we had all the luck with last year. And we were fortunate to get in kind of on the Dadson craze when they weren't in the public eye. And we started to, you know, build a relationship. And just so you guys know, here I'll show it to this camera. When you get a bait from Johnny... This is what it looks like. He puts these little toe tags on. Glenn McDonald Pro Staff. And this one's called The Dude. And they show up. No hooks. And just basically set up like that. And you rig it up yourself. I got a bunch here. Grab a is couple. From mine in the back there? Yours is in the back there too, I think, Ken. So here's another one. Pro Staff Glenn McDonald. So I'm not going to go through all of them. We got a ton of baits from Johnny and Sam. Which is really cool. Yeah, there's a couple more. So, the people that are wondering, that's how we get them from Johnny. And then we rig them up. And you can see here, we have lots of Dadsons. <laughs> so, that, you know, kind of covers the Dadson side of it. And, again, everybody wants the blade with no name. And this is a brand new one that I rigged up. Classic Jack Burns black and silver, and I put a pink dangle on the back. That one's going to be a good one. Give it some color. So, where do we go from here, Kenzie? All right, so here's Silver Jailbird. Here's the original one right here. This is the original one that I call the one from Suic. And basically, off of the back of that one, we started to be known for silver jailbird and we have obviously a ton of them here this is a walk the dog walk the dog top water from top line baits here's a suic that we had run done up basically in our pattern this is a bobsled from buckhorn baits in the back we have a scallywag from lumox we have um, leopardi lures basically in our pattern and then duff did a matlock and a headlock in our pattern and both of these have caught for us. I got a Clarky bait in the back. This is a Keystone King. This is a Hajimoto. Um, this one here is kind of unique. Kinda un this one's got a good story. So one of the 51s, 51 and a half that I caught on Eagle came on this lure and I actually had to send it to Todd Fleury to get him to rebuild it because it actually the epoxy got chewed up. So he redid it, and it's a take on our custom Silver Jailbird. So that one's got a, a unique story to it. We got some Leopardi lures here. And then this is kind of a unique one. I think he calls it his uh, Leo Truck Topwater. And it's in like a Silver Warhawk paint. So that's pretty cool. It's neat when guys reach out and they want to do stuff in our pattern, or our signature pattern. And it, it's just, it's a cool extension of what we do to know that people want to do that kind of stuff for us. You know, there's a couple more in the back here that are basically a take on it. This is actually from one of my buddies that I fished with, John, and it's going to be hitting the market probably in a year. So it's kind of a dive and rise jerk bait. And show you a couple more as we go, but this again is in that silver jailbird pattern. 
Uh, ZM Bates Peach Glide Conklin Glitch in the back. So again, these are just all Silver Jailbird inspired. Over here we have one from Musky Munchies out of Winnipeg and just a bucktail. But again, he wanted to do it in our classic pattern. So we got that. Here's one that one of my friends got done up for me and I can't remember the builder I will apologize I'll try and add it in the notes but this is actual skunk hair this is real skunk hair bucktail yeah I was a little bit skeptical at first but that's what that is is skunk hair How wet does it get? I yeah. haven't even ran that one so I don't even know but there you guys go we get did up uh, some custom run with our 54 logo on the back and I think I got four or five of these still here that I've I've never used maybe we'll do a giveaway at some <laughs> point so you should give some away yeah we should so that's kind of the silver jailbird and just run by them there Ken's that's you know that's one of our kind of signature patterns okay guys so over here on what's basically my pallet wall come and give me a hand Katie hey. Pull this one. So these are basically, I would say it's our Hall of Fame lures. I got three that I retired. So here is my original toad that I got from John at Lake X, and I retired it. And this thing is beat up. It's got a lot of Whoa. fish, the and of it, so I've repaired. glued it and repaired it. And my buddy Steve Smith said I should have did. It a series just following this lure that summer because it caught so many fish but this one the the one really cool fish on it is a 45 inch tiger muskie while fishing with my buddy mark mcdermott and we have that fish in a lax replica on the wall in the house right girls yeah okay and the one katie's holding is a walk the dog dancing raider from joe booker and the cool thing about this is you guys have seen Richie had just caught one just recently on a dancing raider. This one was one of my favorite lures. This one's got a slight crack in it. It actually it starts to hold water. That's why I retired it. But the cool fish on this one is I got a 49 and a half while solo up on long legged. And I'm going to touch on that in an upcoming video. But that's one that I retired. And then this one here is the very first original Bondi Royal Orba that Kyla had picked up. She actually picked it up to use it for a walleye tournament. We went out on Cedar on our anniversary. The kids didn't come, just Kyla and I. And I ended up picking up like a 46 or 47 inch muskie. And it was, we didn't even bump it. It was just a really nice fish. And it come on the Royal Orba, and that started a run on a Royal Orba that fall. I think we got like 20-some fish on this bait, and then we got a bunch the following year. And as we go through the wall, you'll see we got a lot of Bondi Royal Orbas. <clears throat> All right, I'm just going to run through. So what I got going on here is actually two pallets on top of one another. Got it bolted into the wall, and then on the outside here... This man cave board actually come from a bed or something. I'm not even really sure from where, but that holds basically this pallet wall here together. I'm not going to run through all the rubber baits because you guys have seen a lot in the videos. We just touched on the tubes. We've touched on, you know, the sunset jailbird, the carbon perch. We've touched on the quad dogs. I got four quad dogs here. I'm sure I'll get more over the winter. So all the tubes and then here I got Lake X stuff. We obviously, we love the toad and love that original green bullfrog. This one here is actually a color that when Dave and I were down in Wisconsin with my father-in-law, Harry, we stopped at John's and John and I and Jake custom poured this color basically on the spot. And then like a day later, Jake sent me a picture that they caught a fish on that color. So that's always cool. So those are the cool stories that you get, you know, from some of these baits. And this one here is another one that I repaired a lot. You can see all the repair marks in it there. This was a Jolly Rancher. I think I actually put different color parts of legs on there. But it's just been a great, you know, those the toads have been great for us. 
doesn't matter where we fish here's one that's got repairs this one actually has different legs and it's just it's been one of our go-to lures moving down here um medusas which we got everything from like your monsters down don't use the medusa a ton we used to use it a lot but we've we've kind of changed our fishing style and then moving down i have some rover baits which we really like and then we got some shadzillas mike at water wolf was kind enough to send us a bunch of stuff so we got shadzillas ratzillas we got tubezillas which are really cool <laughs> Yeah, lots of Zilla lots stuff. Of Zilla. Lots of Zilla stuff there. And then we got some Water Wolf tubes, which he actually makes a really cool jigging style tube that I want to explore a little bit more this year. Um, I'm not big on the beaver baits. So I don't have a lot. And truth be told, these most of these ones belong to my buddy, Matt, Ron, and Cindy. And just going through the bait wall, a lot of this stuff we share between you know myself ron and cindy and matt my buddy hunter from temple bay lodge will share and exchange some baits so just just so you know some of them may not be mine um here's a slick willy from mkt lures he actually put custom eyes in it this, i lost one there on a pike um that's about it for this little rubber section so i'm going to show you guys some stuff on the other side here all right, so here's the back side of the pallet wall. And I'll hand this back to Kenzie. There's a few things back here I do want to show. I got some Livingston lures, which we don't use a bunch. We got some double Ds, triple Ds up there. I think I got a couple double Ds and triple Ds over here, maybe. But back here is just kind of some extra lures and stuff. But there's one company I definitely want to mention. And I'll just, I'll bring them over here. So... Early on in our muskie career, we had bought some baits from PD's Muskie Lures in Ottawa. And Paul really took a chance on us early and asked us to be on his pro staff. And Paul makes some of the best bucktails. We always like them. They, they're they absolutely like, they just work out of the, as soon as you get them, they work, they spin effortlessly. He does a really great job. I enjoyed talking to him. He's very knowledgeable and he built us a ton of stuff. Here's a triple bladed mag eight. This was one of Kyla's early favorites. This one he called Suicide Squad. And it's just one that looks so amazing in the water. And we worked with him for a few years. And unfortunately, we just had different ideas on where we wanted to go in the industry versus where Paul wanted to go and he's still building baits and a guy like Ben Beatty up on Lac Sewell still uses his stuff amazing stuff we just we went a different direction but I've kept a lot of them and I just wanted to mention that we really appreciated everything that Paul did for us early on we're just going to kind of work our way through here I'll start on this bottom row and obviously you can see we have some in the packages here like I said earlier, there's a bunch of Bondi Royal Orbas and John Bondi has been a huge supporter of what we do. So I really want to thank him. He's been you know, instrumental in making sure that we have baits when we need them. And I give a lot of Bondi Royal Orbas away because our clients like them. Here is the swimming dog in our sunset jailbird pattern. We'll have some of the new ones here once we go to the shows. And again, Brad has been a huge supporter of what we do. So we really appreciate that. Um, this is kind of neat. It's a bottle opener, handmade. It says Musky Voss. And I fished with these guys, Greg and Marty Voss. And they are kind enough to give me that. So that's the cool kind of stuff that you get, you know, in this kind of business. But... Kenzie wanted me to start here with the topwater stuff and these are Ruse custom baits and you guys had seen these on the channel before this one is set up to look like Jigsaw from the Saw movies mm -hmm. and then this one here is set up to look like a zombie from Resident Evil and the eyes are pretty cool from the side yeah like they're glowy. and we got a lot of traction on these when we posted them to our socials 
Um, looking in the back here, here's a creeper from Top Line Baits. I got one of the first creepers, like, like just a bee, it, it, yeah, kinda. yeah. I think he calls it the murder hornets. I got a scat or a dreadlock or yeah, dreadnought in here. Um, got some of the stuff from Bomb Squad MKT. This is a jitterwalker from Fish Whistle. We got more dancing raiders. Uh, what else do we got in the back here? This is one of the very first Big Al top water prototypes. And we are able to use it all the first season. Caught a couple nice fish on it. Dave's dad actually caught his first couple fish on it. So much so that I'll show you guys in a little bit. Um, they sent me a, another one in a custom pattern with a really nice note in it. So that's kind of some of the top water stuff. Here is the original fat bastard that Kyla got from John at Lake X. And this is going to show up in a video in the next couple of weeks as well. It's a really important lure to Kyla and I and Dave and what we do. And it's one that I probably should retire, but we'll keep going here for a little bit. Mackenzie, hey here's one that you might recognize. Do you recognize this lure? Not really. That's the one you caught your big tiger on. Really? Yep. Yeah, that's the uh, Pugsley you caught your big <laughs> tiger on. We got that from Dan Moats. We got a bunch of other ones, basically that similar style of boiler maker. We got a bunch of boiler makers in there. We have cool uh, high roller from handlebars. We got some hot dog slappers and then have a custom one of one food truck from musky munchies and just a really cool purple perch pattern and i'm pretty sure that's one of one painted like that so that's a really cool lure and then as we move over got some ridgeway baits and i've talked about them in our best of 2023 so i won't go into detail there some harvey stuff we have some wiley baits and then we got, this is a pandemic, we got a buckhorn, then we got a bunch of lungeon stuff here, and then we're getting into the top line stuff, but I'll hold off on that, we'll move up. And a bunch of glide baits, and we're not huge on glide baits. Um, I will put a little link here to a glide bait video that we did do. Um, too many to really talk about. Ton of glide baits, we got a bunch from Wicked Deadly Outdoor, Harvey, and we worked with Wicked Deadly Outdoors to produce this one, which is like super heavy. And we didn't really use it much last year. I guess I used this one because the hook guards are off of it. But it's designed to get down 10, 12, 13, 14 feet and be a glide bait down at that depth. And it's something that I think in the future we'll be able to use a little bit better now that we're you know fishing that deeper style of fishing. So again, a lot of glide baits and I know the Americans are huge on glide baits and in Canada, it's just not something that we use a ton. Moving over, we have a row of Harvey Javelins. Then we got some Boss Shad stuff here. Um, got some blue water baits in the back. Actually this one here, Kenzie, we caught one this fall fishing with mom and Dave. Then I got some BR baits. From Southern Ontario, love Bryn stuff. And we got a bunch of Tennessee Shad stuff here. Obviously we like that pattern. Mm -hmm. And then Bryn, and then moving up to Noah Clark stuff here. This is his nine inch Yo Mama, his 13 inch Yo Mama in, again, Tennessee Shad. And then we got 13 inch Granny back there. Don't laugh at me, Ken. I'm not laughing at <laughs> Yo mama sounds like yo mama. <laughs> it is, yeah. And then we got some candies, musky candies, um, Keystone King, um, another Leopardi in that Warhawk pattern. Then we got some, uh, what do we got here? These are from Babe Campbell. <sighs> So we got a bunch of his stuff up there. And then moving over a little wee bit here, we got the one that everybody wants, the Mega Bar <laughs> Fighter. 
And I actually got a new Mega Bar Fighter coming from my buddy Patrick. And then we're into some of the headlocks and matlocks. We've talked about that stuff kind of on the channel at length. So I won't really go into that stuff. I will just kind of run the camera by some of them there. All right, so starting in here, this is the original Top Line Ripper that Adam, Adam gave us from Top Line Baits. This one caught a couple really nice Eagle Lake fish. And it's a bait that I probably should use more, but when we started using tubes, we stopped using this. But I think this is a little bit different than a tube, and I think there's spots that I could probably use it again. We have mini ripper, different uh, color of ripper, a jointed ripper in the back there. So we're covered there. Again, we have the mat locks up here. We have the cast castable 8.5 we got some 8.5s in the back uh, a bunch more suic stuff and then here is the zko from zilla custom baits and this one's got our logo on the back and i believe this one i got one small tiger on it and i hit a rock and actually busted the epoxy off of it but that again guys they're just tools to us they're just you know, it's something that we use. We don't collect this stuff for the sake of collecting. Just and then memories. looking up here, Kenzie, mm -hmm. we have some Buckos branded baits. And then right at the end, I have some Lumox. I got two more Scallywags and a Scallywag Pro. And then up in the back here, we have one of the monster 14 inch Buckos. And I've used that a bit. I should use it a little bit more. And then at the end, we have some more Bondi Royal Orbas. Big shock there, right, Kenz? Mm -hmm. And there's the one with the Growler blade attachment. We love that setup. Um, got some. At the end here, we have some drop time tackle baits. This was a custom one that I had Jody and Thatcher set up for us with just a cool pink and white set of blades on it stagger they call it a non-typical so Jody and Thatcher have been you know big supporters of what we do so we appreciate them and obviously we have a ton of growlers of all different you know kind sizes colors you name it we got a couple prototypes this is probably I think one of the very first ones that we got from them that we had a lot of success on and then uh, where's our original purple? My leg's itching here. Some raisin. I believe it might be. This might be our original purple one that we had all the success with as well. But ton of growlers in there. We in the back. I have some Lebowski stuff. Really like Johnny Lubera's stuff. It is harder to get, but. Got a bunch in the back. We got some drop tine, triple deuces, like that stuff. Um, this is some chatter baits from SS Lures out of Quebec. And it's a big chatter bait. And we actually really like those. We just didn't really use them enough. But I think going into next year, Dave and I have been talking, there's a few spots that we can use them. Got a little bit of marabou down here. This is Georgian Bay Bucktails. Um, we got, I believe this one comes from, geez, escapes me right on the, right at the moment. If I remember, I'll try and add it in. I can't remember exactly who like gave me this here. one. We got some marabou from Musky Munchies here. Don't have a ton of marabou, but we do have a few here. And then moving up. Here we have some stuff from Pandemonium, the Marvin stuff. Kevin sent us a bunch of baits last year, and the SRJ up here was one of our top baits of the year. And we did use his bucktails a fair amount. We tried it, and actually the one that we really liked the best was this single Elite 8. And Kendra caught a nice fish with me on it. I think Kyla caught one on it. And I had a couple clients catch on it. And the nice thing with his baits is that really flexible wire in there and it doesn't kink. 
So that's that's all the uh, pandemonium stuff. And then moving up, yeah, here's the SRJ. Like I said, this was one of our top baits of 2023. Caught a bunch on the SRJ. Just a great little bait. Like for Canada, it's it's almost the perfect size. You know, it's just a, just a perfect style of bait. And then this is it. This is the OG right here. This is the dipstick, the very first <laughs> one. This thing caught an absolute ton of fish. I know Adam's going to send me some new stuff. I don't actually have a lot of top line dipstick stuff here, guys. But that's the original one. And then this is a prototype that I tried last year. Two hooks with a belly weight. And we actually added a pin similar to like a Supernatural. And this one works good. I just could never get it weighted where I felt, you know, really comfortable with it. Got the jointed one in the back here. And then uh, one of the very original XLs. And I'll be getting some new top line stuff. But Adam's been a huge supporter of ours from day one. And this here is my buddy John. And he's going to be coming out with some of this stuff. And this is a twin tail, hard body. Something similar to like some of that Lee Lure stuff. But it's, it's basically like a pull bait. And he makes a couple different styles of it with different tails. Here's like a dive and rise style. And then here again is that pull bait with just a big, one big tail. Neat stuff. He does some really nice work. And we definitely want to try and use it a bit more and, and help him promote it a bit. All right. Without taking everything off, if we look up here, Kenzie, we got a rack with flap tails. We have Bomb Squad. We have a Getty. We have... Uh, top line we have some Zilla stuff we have the Lee lures big guy baits and I have a worth flap tail which is the bluey purple one if for me if I was going to pick one that worth is the one that I like the best and then looking at the shelf in the corner you guys it might be hard to see but I just got a, like a lot of our walleye and bass stuff stacked up there I have some rod racks over here with most of our walleye and bass stuff Bunch of spare reels, new reels, um, just a lot of, you know, just assorted stuff on that wall over there, on that wall unit over there. And I'll kind of show you guys our rod racks here in a minute, but that's the majority of the bait wall without, you know, really going into every single bait. It just, we or organized it this way for the sake of space because a lot of guys put one lure per peg to make it look bigger if we did that kenzie it would take up half our garage <laughs> yeah like easily half our garage and it was just really easy to do it this way oh one other couple things i wanted to show here um careful they got some grenades here which we like and then one of my clients which is really cool ed Give me some lures because he had seen that Kenzie liked black and green and Katie liked purple and chartreuse. And I draw them on the chalkboard. Yeah, and when we, he came up and fished with us, he gave me these to give to the girls. And then he gave me one here in black and silver. So kind of that silver jailbird. So it, it's really cool when, you know, the people that we fish with and stuff do that kind of stuff. And it... it it doesn't go unnoticed with us, so we really appreciate it, guys. All right, so I rolled this display unit, which obviously my wife works, you know, in retail, so she always has lots of display units. So this side, I got stealth leaders, sucker rigs. I got a bunch of the drop tine hunger strike tubes, some stuff, you know, spare stuff from drop tine. And rolling around here, just a bunch of assorted stuff. These are some swim baits from SJR and cool stuff. We got a Boggs Mohawk. Here's the original, the one bucktail. And Josh last year was nice enough to send up uh, one with the bigger, this I believe is double nines. So it's like the ones that they're producing this year with the new collar on it and he actually included a little dangle blade and we are going to do a 
a challenge, the one versus a blade with no name. And we probably still will this year, I think, Dave and I. Oh, we got a whale tail. We have the Rusties. I can't remember what the name of this one is, but I did a video on it. It's like super noisy in the water. And we got a dying dog. We have some of the Munts um, castable flies. Really cool stuff. Didn't use them a lot. Something I definitely want to get more into. And I will be getting a rod this year that'll be set up for using flies. Got a couple spanky beats over here. There's some on the wall over there. And then we got some of the figure eight baits with the sil silicone skirts. Um, got a bunch of those. They're kind of unique and it's just something that we don't really use, but you know, there's, there's definitely spots where we could. And then this is a really cool one here. So this is the Mad Tail from Mad Chase Lures. And Matthew does an amazing job on these. And he, they come with a bunch of different styles of blade attachments, single blade, tandems, a spinner bait style. I put on a set of stagger blades from Waterwolf just to give it a different look. But it, it's almost like a castable fly. He does just some amazing work there. Um, so I'm pretty fortunate to get one of those. And then down here we have a couple more lures from Mad Chase. Spin it around. We got Barbarian Braid. We got some Chaos Pegasus. Uh, some Kodiak Navins. Oh, here's the... Uh, I think this was the Musky Junk, I believe is what he called it. Little diving rise. Kind of a neat take on a diving rise. We have, I believe this is Pandemic Beats. I believe this one was. Yeah, Pandemic Beats, Dive and Rise. Oh, a bunch of weights, yada, yada, yada. And then on this side here, this is the uh, TR Custom Big Al that they did in kind of a baby loon. And then he included a note in there thanking me for all the help prototyping their stuff. I'm just going to leave that just basically like that. That's a keepsake. Uh, we got one of the new Boss Shads. I believe they call it the Kingpin with the soft tail. So we got to try that out last year. Um, got a top line Twitch here. Uh, Lynchum lures. We got a bunch of the stuff from TNA, like the Angry Dragon stuff. Got a couple of the drop tine base jumpers. And then going down, we got lot of stuff here from musky munchies and we worked with jeremy on a couple different projects and if i can find it here this one right here i believe this was the very first prototype he ever did that he ended up calling the Mega Slurp. So it has blades that spin opposite directions. And it was an idea that Dave and I had and brought to him. And he actually had it. But I believe this is the very first prototype like that. And then I have another interesting bait here. If I can find it. Um, where did it go? Of course, I just had it out the other day, Ken's. <laughs> what color is it? Oh, right here. Oh. So, long before the grenade, we were already thinking about a really heavy bucktail that could get down 10, 12, 15 feet. And Jeremy built us this super front heavy bucktail with his little prop blade and the thing with the prop blade is they don't have as much inherent lift as a set of mag blades so we use this and we probably should have used it more because now that we're fishing deeper this is a kind of style of bait that the grenade actually kind of became and it it's a really cool bait and like i say it's one that we should probably use a bit more and i have one more really cool prototype buried in this mix here if i can find it <laughs> so many hooks on one little thing. Yeah. Well, let's 
is not it. Right here. Whoa. Okay, long before the ninja from Lee Lures, we drew up a design for a star-shaped blade. We ended up calling this the Sheriff's Badge, and it actually works. In the water, it actually works, but it, it was just going to be way too hard to produce. And the problem with that is if a fish grabs it there, what the heck's a fish going to do? But Jeremy built this for us, and it's a little single bucktail. And again, we call it the Sheriff's Badge, and I believe we have the only one that exists. Well, guys, I know that's long-winded, but there's a lot of stuff there, and you could go into more stories on each, you know, each different thing. But something cool that I got here recently, this hat and this camera, for anybody that watched the original Giant's Quest Musky series on YouTube, this is one of the cameras that Mike Grant used throughout that, and he asked if I wanted to use it, and I probably won't use it, but it's a cool piece of history in, you know, the YouTube musky industry. So I I was like, yeah, Mike, I'll take it for sure. And I'll put it up somewhere here so that it's, you know, it's something that, you know, gets displayed because this kind of stuff is really cool. I want to thank you guys for taking this time to kind of go on that little journey with us. It's been one of my most requested videos is to look at the bait wall and what we got going on and it, it feels like we actually rushed through it but that being said you guys tell me what you want to look at a little bit more which lures you've seen that you'd like to see in the water or you would like to learn more about or have a deep dive let me know in the comments and we'll come back and we'll address some of it it's very interesting to look on a wall and see the same baits you use over and over and the ones that you pick up or buy or, you know, get given to you and you think, man, that's going to be a great bait and you you just don't use it or you don't find a way to use it or it doesn't fit your style of fishing and, and having everything set up like this, it, it gives us that opportunity to see which baits we're always grabbing. We have some really cool ideas planned for the summer of 2024 as it kind of goes to baits we're going to do some really neat stuff with baits and show you guys what we look for in a bait and how we're going to pick some baits that early on we think are going to be the stars of our year and you know it's just it's always fun to give you guys what you want and i know this has been a long one so again thank you guys for hanging in there and I, hopefully you guys get some value out of this and gives you an idea of some stuff to you know pick up or try and i didn't thank every single bait builder for all their support because without them this doesn't happen and just because i didn't say your name or their name doesn't mean that we don't appreciate them because we do we absolutely do it's never lost on us that you know we get the support that we do so we we truly appreciate that for you guys that made it to the deep end here, check out the video right here. We're going to keep it lighthearted, and we're going to look at some of our best bloopers that we've had in the boat. Those are fun ones, and until next time, 54 Bust is out of here. We'll catch you guys out on the water later.